Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Way back there is Tucker. Yeah, that's me. And we are in the very luxurious top of the line Infinity QX60 autograph. Mm -hmm. All wheel drive. A vehicle you learned to drive in the snow in about this time last year. In this video, we're gonna see how it fits into our daily life, what she thinks of it on her home turf, and how it fits our family of three. Stay tuned. All right, Holly, we're back on our home turf. You are out of the snow. You are in situations that you're very comfortable and familiar with. You still happy we have an infinity in the driveway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, to be clear, we also drove on the road without uh, ice and snow. But in For a fairly long distance. In situations that you, places yes. you were not familiar. So here, yes, you get to run down the streets that you know. <laughs> you don't have to worry about missing a turn or anything like that. You, right. You can focus on the car. Yes. Which I was not focusing on the car a whole lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before, other than its capabilities, and I guess I was mostly focused on the ca capabilities. But I will say, even though I may not have consciously registered it when I did the winter drive event last year with Infinity, um, I was in this car all day. Yeah. 7 a.m. to, so, you know, I was there all day. You've got deep knowledge of this okay. vehicle. I've got deep knowledge. And well, and I'm, I was saying that to say that normally um, I'm, I'm getting old. I have a bad back. I have sciatic nerve issues. And if I'm sitting all day in an uncomfortable seat, those at the end of the day are really exasperated. But that was not the case in this car because these seats are so nice. Do you even have your massage function? I don't on? even have my massage function it's on. It's the button that is staring up at you. Just look at the top of ah. it. All right. So per our use, we'll start outside, work our way inside, talk about driving characteristics now <laughs> versus yeah. in the winter driving event last year. What are your thoughts on the looks of this thing? Well, the look is really pretty. Yes. Um, it's uh, well, of course, I love the color. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, same it's like color. Like a smoky blue color. Yeah. It's very pretty. Um, but then, it's got. Um, I would call them some subtle curves mixed with some sharp angles mm -hmm. that make it very pretty. I mean, all I'm seeing right now are three very curvaceous mm -hmm. elements on the hood up there. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a very, very beautiful vehicle. Yes. I personally. I personally rank it in my top three of three row crossovers. With, as far as style? Yeah, with mm -hmm. the Genesis GV80 mm -hmm. and the Lincoln Aviator. You remember the Lincoln? Yes. Yes. Yes, I remember the Lincoln. <laughs> so this feels very much like a Lincoln on the outside. It has a lot of similar design mm -hmm. motifs outside. Uh, including the roof line and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, very nice lighting signature on this one. The uh, Infinity logo lights up up front. Yeah. So I would say the the um, style is safe and probably pleasing to most people, mm -hmm. but um, not boring. Yeah. Moving inside, where you've spent so much time. <laughs> You are quite familiar. <laughs> what are your thoughts in here? The design is in here is top notch. Yes. It is so pretty. Um, probably my favorite feature of the design is the quilted mm -hmm. dashboard. Yeah. Which mimics our seats. Yeah. All right. We're going to play a quick game here. Uh oh. Real or fake? Real. Real. Real leather. Real. Semi aniline leather. Real or fake? Real. Yes. Real open pore <laughs> wood. Uh, and you can feel the texture in it. Very nice. Yeah. Um, it's very nice. So, yeah, the design in here. Can you believe we have driven a car built on this same platform? Hmm. That basically shares all the bones with this? Would that have been the Nissan? It would have been the Nissan. What? 
Yeah. So look at me. I know. The Nissan Pathfinder shares bones with this, but you'd be hard the, to tell. Yeah. The style is so much better. Yeah. This is this this is such a much more luxurious car than that one was. Yes. The, the, uh, yes. Yeah. And you are the target market for this vehicle. I well, they did well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, when this vehicle came out, this new design. Uh, I believe it was Kate Hudson was used in all their marketing as a young mm. mom, uh, shuttling kids around. We've got our kid all the way back in the third row because that's what he prefers, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, heated second row captain's chairs. Nice. Also leather wrapped, center console back there, big massive panoramic roof. Mm-hmm. Now say when, um, I was spending the day filming. It was very easy to, uh, we had a lot of space for cubbies for mm -hmm. cameras and mics and my big old laptop bag. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk storage in here. Felt lined, center Felt console. lined, some little cubbies right here. Yeah. That's the perfect size for the oh, lipstick. Yeah. Uh, cubbies in the door, damped felt lined glove box. Mm -hmm. Chi wireless charger there, a couple cup holders with grippers in it. Yeah, pretty good up here. Again, we've already mentioned the center console that Tucker really likes in the second row, even though he sits in the third row. <laughs> and the third row does only have two seats in it because that center portion has like a hard plastic shelf. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't want three people back there. <laughs> but uh, we've already talked about the seats, nice and comfortable, but they Do you say head up display? Not yet, oh, but sorry. they're heated and ventilated seats. You have a head-up display. I have a head-up display. You have a fully digital gauge cluster back behind there, which, mm -hmm. to be fair, you haven't been in it yet, is ripped straight out of the Nissan Rogue. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they only it changed, looks cool. Yeah, they only changed the image of the vehicle on it. Uh, we've got the old infotainment. If it's working. Yeah. We've got the old infotainment here that does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless. Mm -hmm. We've got some knocks on this one. I have said since we've started receiving Nissan products, I just need to pony up and pay Google and uh, do like General Motors and have Google built in. They're doing that. Ah. The Nissan Rogue gets Google built in for 2024. Very much needed here because this section you can't swipe away. You can't swipe through different things. You have to dig through the menu to change what is here. Mm -hmm. uh, the most interesting thing you could probably put is the weather that we have now or a digital or analog clock. But I, I just wish CarPlay filled the whole thing. Yeah, so then you have a yeah. clock there. Clock yeah. there. It, it's okay. like I could pull up weather on my phone. I could pull up navigate. Like, it's to, to stop. You can also, when you're driving, just look outside to see the weather. Yes. <laughs> Another downside. Lots of gloss black oh, where yeah. you are supposed to touch. Yeah. So yeah. these are all touch capacitive. It's a consideration for I sure. I give you haptic feedback when you push them, but. Those are minor yeah. compared to how beautiful this <laughs> is. So all that swept under the rug. I guess now would be a good time to transition to its riding uh, comfortability, ride and handling and power. Turning on the brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. Again, you've spent a lot of time in this many different uh, driving situations. What are your thoughts? Um, it's pretty smooth. Tucker, what are your thoughts back there? How's your wobbly head? Good. Good? That was yep. the biggest bump on the That's road. Couldn't hardly, I mean, you could tell it was there, but not yeah. jiggle so, your bones out of your skin. Yep, so very nice, very, very comfortable nice and smooth ride. and comfortable. Uh, and of course, the seats are so cushy. Yeah. That makes it so nice. Uh, how's the steering? Is it light? Is it heavy? Is it just right? Um, I think it's just right. How's the steering yeah. wheel? Steering wheel's amazing. And it's heated. Um, it's <laughs> heated. I have my heated heated steering wheel on. Mm -hmm. It's um, thick with, I would say, firm, but a, a little bit of squish. Yeah. Enough squish. Okay. What about the buttons? The buttons, there are not very many, and I like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and historically, you don't mess with them too much. Uh, you get what you like on the screen. 
and yes. let her rip. But yeah, uh, I don't mess with the buttons too much usually. I guess now would be a good time to transition to uh, putting in Tucker's child safety seat, not only way back there in the third row where he currently is, which the only place for lower latches are where he's currently sitting, but we also put it in the second row. Then we'll come back, finish up talking storage back there and the like. There's definitely a lot to like about this Infiniti QX60 Autograph. Four families, and that starts back here with child seat installation. We do have captain's chairs in this one with a removable center console if you'd like. These are heated seats, nothing more. And then we do also have manual sunshades on the back window. If I can get that hooked into place. Very nice, nice panoramic roof. Ceiling mounted vents uh, for the HVAC controls back here. So I really like that a lot back here. Another thing I really like a lot, we'll get into it after we put Tucker's child safety seat in, child seat friendly second row seats. So that is a nice touch. And you can see they do slide a fair amount. So that will come into hand or come in handy when we install this in its forward facing format. But let's go ahead and bring it in in rearward facing format to see how much room that leaves me in the passenger seat up front. This is Tucker's Graco Extendafit uh, child safety seat. It is the exact same one he used uh, when he was rearward facing. And uh, aside from how high this section is adjusted, it's just like how we uh, rode around with him. And as you can see, we've still got plenty of room here. I did not move the seat any, but as we come around to the front seat, we can see that there is a comfortable amount of room up here. I've got no real complaints. In fact, I could probably inch back just a little, very comfortable up here in the front row of seats with a rear facing car seat. So huge win for the QX60 for small families with rearward facing kids, but We'll go ahead and spin this thing around because Tucker has been forward facing for quite some time. We will lift this headrest. That is a snug headrest and go ahead and drop the top tether back behind the seat uh, for that installation here in just a moment. The lower latch points on this do contrast because they are black against this caramel colored leather but they are just kind of in between the seat backs and bottoms. They are fairly easy to get to, so no real complaints there. And we'll make sure we're in a good position with the seat back recline and fairly easy vehicle height wise to get in here and tighten down, snug down just like that. We'll go ahead and slide it forward. I wish it went forward just a little bit more because now I'm a little going blind at it back here but it is a fairly easy installation process when you come to it. And I will say the seat back is a little on the squishy side around the top corners of it. So you may do some long damage, long-term damage to uh, the leather on the backs of these seats if you leave this in place for too long, but just a nice option. You can see Tucker now has plenty of room up here in the front. And because these are child seat friendly car seats, uh, or second row seats, I can flip and fold this forward with it in place and still get to that third row without having to remove that center console. All of these very nice things, huge A plus, 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 plus for second row insulation, both forward and rear here in the Infinity QX60. Now let's take it out and see about insulation in that third row. Speaking of third row comfort, I'm gonna go ahead and climb in and show you just what this third row is like back here for adults. Little in the upright position right now, but I can recline the seat a fair amount. It is 60-40 with the 60% being here on the driver's side. Now I'm fairly comfortable. The tracks are a little on the narrow side and pulling the seat too. It's a little snug back here for adults. Again, I'm 5'10". Wouldn't want uh, someone to try and recline back here. Uh, that's definitely gonna be snug, but I do have a couple cup holders back here, a USB-A port here in the door. Uh, same is true on the other side. And I do have a button for getting out, but now let's bring Tucker's child safety seat back here. I will note there is no pretense 
of putting a third person here. We have a hard uh, plastic center piece with a rubber mat covering it. So if you want to set your phone back here, it's not going to rattle around. But yeah, you're not going to be putting someone in the center here. Also of note, these headrests are rather large and manually fold down. So I'm going to go ahead and fold that one down uh, after I install Tucker's child seat so I can actually see in the back. But we are going to need this one up uh, for installing his child seat back here because as you can see with them down, if I can fold this one down, they jut out and that just is not going to work. I'm also going to have to adjust uh, the pitch of this. The uh, latch points are only here on this side, uh, so this is the only location where we can put Tucker's child safety seat. I'm going to go ahead, back myself out here, and bring his child safety seat in. Nice uh, process right there. I will go ahead and latch the seat belt simply because he will be riding uh, back here a lot, and we don't want to plus that seat belt. Much like the second row of seats, the uh, lower latch points are uh, really just wedged in between uh, the seat back and seat bottom. So really had to come at them at just the right angle. And then let's see, get this one over here. I tightened this down a little prematurely. There we go. And well, get there we go. Snug this down into place right here, and we can adjust that seat back recline just enough uh, to match the pitch of the seat back here. Now let's head back to the very back, see what that does to cargo space, and see how easy it is to put that top tether in. Getting into the back is very easy. There's a little button hidden right above the in. And infinity and you can see we've got a fairly nice cargo compartment back here very competitive with the rest of the class enough for an indoraptor if you carry those around like we do and you can see we do have top tethers on both seat back positions here even though we don't have the lower latch points in that seat just something to note you will have to use the seat belt installation method there as far as the top tether goes very interesting in the headrest situation. Uh, I don't know that this is my favorite because, yeah, you are definitely going to be doing some damage to the headrest snugging this up, but there's no real way to go around the headrest. So not my favorite uh, top tether installation. I'm definitely going to have to use two hands to really snug that down, but it can be done back here in the third row. Another thing to note, like I said, these are manually folding and manually folding. So you can get more cargo space back here if you need it. I do believe most people are gonna ride with the third row seats folded. And if you do, you can actually bring them back up with a power button. So that is a very nice touch. I like that they're manually folding. It's just that much quicker. And it's a whole lot easier than trying to uh, grab this, having them as a power uh, return feature. So very nice combination there from Infinity on this one. We do have a carpeted floor mat right here with some hidden storage underneath. It is hard plastic, so don't put anything in here that you think will rattle, but I do like how the hinges keep it in place no matter where you have it. So that is a nice touch as well. We do have a little bit of power back here, though it's not a household style plug, so not the best for tailgating. And then you can see I'm 5'10". This is how much the hatch opens. The buttons for opening and closing it are up here. Very nice, very quick and easy to close back down. For some reason, it doesn't want to close. But that's enough child seat stuff. Let's get back to the inside. Tucker, what are your thoughts on this car? I'm not quite sure there's what more for me to learn about it. Yeah, there is a lot for you to learn about it, right? Yeah. Why did you choose to ride all the way back there? Because I love where I'm getting the third row. Do you was wish we had a third row? Yeah. 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 Was it easy to get back there? Yes. Yeah? How come? There's a whole seat in the way. Because there's a folding button that folds the seat. Yeah? Well, how are you going to get out of there? Because the seat's all the way back and the button's on the side. Think again. 
Is there another button? Yep. Oh, wow. A button on the back of the seat. That's pretty cool. But it's the same button. Yeah? What do you think about... Uh, I can press that button all by myself. Yeah. What do you think about uh, the fact that you have a vent right there up above you? Huh. Is that keeping you nice and warm back there? Yeah. Wrapping it all up. What were your final thoughts last year after putting it through its paces in winter weather? I really liked it then, and I really like it now. Okay. <laughs> it hasn't changed living with it for yeah. a week. And been very comfortable for us, very luxurious. Fits in our 1963 built two single bay garage door garage, yeah. uh, just fine. Uh, very comfortable, 360 cameras in it. Mm -hmm. You already mentioned head-up display, blind spot mirrors. Mm -hmm. uh, how's the visibility in this one? So, the, I'll say, the <laughs> out the rear view is very, very small. But, but. the rear view camera <laughs> comes with the camera. Yeah. The camera rear view. I don't usually love the, the camera in the rear view, but I really do think that this car needs it because yeah. between the head rest at yeah. the back, um, there's only a very small view out the back of the car. Um, but other than that, and then we have the um, shades, built-in so built yeah. shades on the side um, that, are, that we like, yeah. having a kid that sits back there especially. So all the way around, pretty good. Yeah. Care to guess? Very good. And they're all all-wheel drive, right? Uh, this one's all-wheel drive. They are not all all-wheel oh. drive. You can get front-wheel drive ones. Oh, okay. So, okay. fuel economy is rated 20 city, 25 highway, 22 combined mm -hmm. uh, from the 3.5 liter V6. I'm going to have to pan through a couple of things over here to get our fuel. We've driven this thing 50 miles so far, averaging 12.2, all city driving. Mm -hmm. We've not put any miles on it. That is what we are doing today, putting miles on it. But yeah, uh, definitely shy of the 20, 25, 22 MPG numbers. But again, it's kind of unique to our situation thus far. Uh, we've driven it 50 miles in the city. So yeah. you do the math there. Um. Yes. Do they make any hybrids of these? No, not yet. Uh, care to guess the MSRP? 67. Pretty close. I think you remember from last I year. I don't remember. <laughs> I will say that. I We talk about a lot of cars and a lot of prices. Yes. I don't remember, but that felt right to me. <laughs> so this one starts at 66. One. Okay. So you're yeah. right there. Yep. Uh, we've got a few options. Uh, the lighting that I mentioned earlier, 69 to 40. 69 to 40. Do you feel like it is a bargain in the luxury space as yes. equipped? Oh yeah, for sure. As equipped. This is a luxury car. Yeah. Um, and so I would say that price is on the low end of luxury, but you get, this is what I always say about those six figure cars or those that are in the 80s or 90s that don't have like a head up display or yeah. don't have ventilated seating that you, there are cars out there that are luxury that have all of it this this is a car that um has all of those luxuries i can't think of anything that it's missing it's got the head up display heated ventilated seats massage seats mm. quilted seats real leather real wood up here like yeah it's a it's a bargain for everything. Oh, and all-wheel drive yep. that you're getting, so. That you know is very capable. <laughs> yes. Personal it's, experience. Trust me, it is capable. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, if you want to see more from Holly, see some clips from her driving in the winter last year, go find her on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk. Facebook, Instagram, X. Uh, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us, in a very uh, white uh, morning here in East Texas with all the frost, <laughs> hopefully you're not going to have to put your skills to use in this 2024 Infiniti QX60 autograph all-wheel drive. Until next time, gearheads. Bye. Bye.
This one guy, he was always like, push it, push it, push it, push it, go. You can go faster than that. I'm like, I really don't, I can't. I don't like, I'm too wordy. Too wordy, Corey, too wordy. Well.